PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, first and foremost, is about two things. Uh, one, it's a 2D four-player fighting game. Uh, two, and perhaps most importantly, it's a celebration. It's a celebration of the PlayStation universe, the PlayStation characters, and the fans. I think the fans have been waiting for this game for a long time. Uh, they've been asking for it long before Sony Santa Monica and Superbot had the idea to make the game. And so really, it's about responding to that request and satisfying uh, that real interest from the fans. The basics of PlayStation All-Stars are that uh, each character has about two dozen attacks, a couple of throws, uh, some blocking, defensive mechanisms, uh, and this really important system that we call the Super System. So while you're fighting, uh, all the characters build up energy, and that energy is uh, displayed at the bottom of the screen on these meters. Uh, this energy goes towards the performing of these super attacks. Uh, each character has three super attacks. Uh, each one is progressively better at killing uh, than the last. So a level one super is pretty good at killing one opponent. A level three super is really good at killing a bunch of guys. So as you fight, uh, you have to sort of constantly decide, uh, is now the right time for me to do a level one? Should I save up and try to get that level two or maybe that level three and weigh the rewards of that? So we have two main styles of play, uh, match options basically in PlayStation All-Stars. Uh, one is the, the time-based play style, which is what uh, we demo today. In that one, uh, we keep the score a mystery and you don't really find out until the end of the match. And then we have our stock play, which is uh, each character has a set number of lives, essentially, a number of times that they can die uh, before they're sort of out of contention. And we do display that uh, during gameplay, but we kind of like uh, in the time-based matches leaving it a mystery until the end. The concept of the mashup is something that permeates uh, all over the place in this game. Uh, so our levels um, are a good example of that. I think it would have been easy for us to just say, okay, we've got Metropolis and Ratchet and Clank. Let's just throw some guys in there and make a cool level and have some fun. But, but we thought, let's apply this mashup uh, through and through into the game. So instead of just uh, Metropolis and Ratchet and Clank, we actually combined that experience with the Hydra from you know the original first level in God of War 1. Uh, so there's a, a bit of a boss battle mixed in uh, from God of War with this Metropolis uh, from Ratchet and Clank. And uh, that same concept of mashup applies to the music as well. We take these songs that these uh, that come from these original worlds that, that fans are familiar with, we put a little bit of a spin on it. We've got John King, who's doing all the music in our game, adds uh, his touches to it, does a little bit of a remix, combines those two songs in the game, and you can hear that play out. Uh, it's really cool. I think fans are going to really like it. The levels play a very vital role in terms of the gameplay. They're always doing something. They're always alive. There's always something for players to pay attention to and respond to. In Metropolis, from Ratchet and Clank, for instance, uh, there's always platforms moving in and out, conveyor belts activating and deactivating, items being introduced from off screen. Uh, it's just something that you constantly need to be mindful of because you never know when the dynamics of the match are going to change uh, to your favor or against you. And responding to those is really important uh, for success. <laughs> The items in the game are another way for us to really play up this celebration and this mashup from all these different universes. So today in the demo that you saw, we have like the Spear of Destiny from God of War. We also have a Hedgehog Grenade from Resistance. We have a, a Gravity Shield that protects you from damage. Uh, that's from Wipeout. And we also have a Rocket Launcher, uh, the RPG-7 from the Uncharted series. So just another opportunity for us to get a lot of those IP in there that a lot of the fans love uh, and just get those characters in there and playing with those and having fun. We had an interesting challenge with this game in that you have some characters like Kratos, who has been in a half dozen, dozen games, has a long storied history of action and getting in there and mixing it up. He's even appeared in fighting games before. Um, translating the essence of that character into PlayStation All-Stars presents one kind of challenge. Then you have characters like Sweet Tooth, characters like Parappa the Rapper, characters like Fat Princess, who have never appeared in a game anything like this uh, with this sort of gameplay. And the challenge there is capturing the essence of those characters, what they're really about. Who is Sweet Tooth? Who is Parappa? Who is Fat Princess? Translating that into the PlayStation All-Stars and Periods. In some ways, that allows us to create entirely new movesets and entirely new gameplay. And we have these characters doing things that they've never done before. Um, and that's a really interesting opportunity for us. Uh, we think it, uh, while at the same time, pays all the respect 
to the IP and those characters and what they bring, it also introduces something new, a new expression of sort of those characters. I'm a fighting game fan. I've been playing fighting games and loving fighting games for almost my entire life. And the legitimacy and the depth uh, that's there in this, uh, what is very a very accessible fighting game, is something I'm really proud of. I'm wearing clean underwear. PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale will be on the PlayStation 3 this holiday season. Yeah.